Tony, what angered you at the end of the race? What did you take issue with? What the hell do you think I was mad about? Dumb little s runs us clear down to the infield. He wants to b about everybody else, and he's the one that drives like a little b I'm going to bust his ass. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Great, huge success. Great luck today. You're having a great uh, time as an owner. Is there any possibilities of hanging up this silly drive yeah. habit and just give that mic away you don't even deserve to have that mic right now what the hell's wrong with you wait that climb over in. this counter and come beat your ass yeah so uh, uh, I, I like that's the me. worst question i've heard all week i think you're racing every night this week Come yeah on. He, i think he missed that part i don't know I don't... go ahead bob <laughs> bob and then nate this might be a worse question i afraid to ask i uh, wouldn't then if you <laughs> no, think it's no, going to no. be worse than it probably is <laughs> now bob kravitz with the indianapolis star is, is there anything that nascar or the ims can do to create a little bit more passing uh in these races because since 04 there just hasn't really been a lot of passing look up racing in the dictionary and tell me what racing says in the dictionary and then look up passing in the dictionary and tell me what passing is we're racing here so I, that's all i'm going to say this is racing not if you want to see passing we can we can go out on 465 and we can pass all you want and if you can tell me that's actually more exciting than what you see here at IMS and the history of this facility and the great race car drivers and race cars that have competed here this is about racing this is about cars being fast um, you don't it doesn't have to be two and three wide racing all day long to be good racing uh, racing is about trying to figure out how to take the package that you're allowed and make it better than what everybody else has and do a better job with it. Let's go with Ben and then to David and then to Jenna again. Do we really have to go to Jenna again? <laughs> we don't have to. Okay. Jump with the Conk monitor. Uh, I just want to talk to you about uh, on the front straightaway where you took the lead there. Uh, what was the technique behind that, behind that in terms of, I mean, when did you decide that was the, play, the, the point to make? To make your move, um, you know, and, and just, uh, I mean, what was the thought, the, the thought there? Well, I mean, I planned it for 280 some odd laps. I knew he was going to run out of fuel right at that moment, and <laughs> versus just driving through him and running over him, it was just seemed like it may have been an easier option just to turn left and drive around him. So, um, I guess that was my strategy all along. I knew kind of that's what we were going to do. I just had to wait for that opportunity. No follow-up to that. Let's go to... Uh, I, I got... <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and, and we were doing so good in here today. <laughs> Sorry, I got to ask you after you get upset, but... <laughs> I'll try to cheer up for you. Thank you. Crash more cars today. We didn't fill the quota for today for uh, Talladega and NASCAR. If we haven't crashed at least 50% of the field by the end of the race, we need to extend the race till we at least crash 50% of the cars because it's... It's not fair to these fans for them to not see any more wrecks than that and more tore up cars. I mean, we, we still had over half the cars running at the end, and that's, uh, it shouldn't be that way. I don't think any of the wrecks were an overheating issue. That's why I say I don't, I mean, I think we ought to just tape them off solid and run them until they blow up anyway. I think it'd make it a lot more exciting for the fans. If we don't crash half of the field by the end of the race, they, need to, they really need to extend it because, I mean, that's what, that's what the fans want. They want to see that excitement. I'm upset that we didn't crash more cars. I mean, I feel like the... I feel like that's what that's what we need. You know, that's what we're here for. I mean, and I feel bad if I don't spend at least $150,000 and tore up race cars going back to the shop. So uh, we definitely got to do a better job of that. It, it would have been a lot more fun if I could have got caught up in one more wreck. If I could have done that, it would have been perfect. I mean, I think if we could make it a figure eight, it'd be perfect. It would absolutely be perfect here. It'd be better than what we got. So that's that's going to be my vote next week is that we get it, make it a figure eight and or we can go stop at the halfway, make a break, and turn around and go backwards the rest of the way. And then with 10 to go, we'll split the field in half, and half of them can go the regular direction, and half of them can go back. There's been no wreck. I mean, does that amaze you? Have you ever seen anything like that? David, only you'd think about stuff like that. I don't, I don't know about what you think of during the race, but I try to figure out how to win the race and make my car go fast. I don't sit there and think of that petty crap that you think of. Go to the press box. Glad what? to see you're back to form. So we saw it seemed like Ryan Scott and the 13 got together. We'll see right. This is exiting turn two. Gets really narrow right there. You see Tony Stewart get loose. Might make contact with the left rear of Brian Scott. It's hard to see. Well, he did right there. Well, he definitely made contact with the 44 right there. Wow. No question about that. Yeah, I don't know if, if Tony was mad because he came off the corner side by side or if he's going to say he misjudged that, but 
Looks like Tony was not happy. 14 to meet them in the NASCAR hauler at the conclusion of the race. I thought Brian Scott did an admirable job in this interview of telling his side of the story. Giving no room whatsoever to the 18. And another big crash on the backstretch ramp. Man, and right up in front of more traffic. Behind you in three. And Ryan Newman's in it. David Reagan is in it. Well, Fire. And Chris Buescher was in it as well. Chris Buescher involved. The 83 of Dylan Lupton up on top of the 31. The fire underneath the hood of the 23. And the 14 of Tony Stewart. Looks like Smith the whole line's out of the 14. Look at the Newman. car on top of yep. that front fender. Newman trying to get out. You see the safety worker trying to help Dylan Lupton out. Dylan Lupton's car on top of the 31. Rick, we knew it was going to be a crazy night. Richmond, as the red flag is displayed, but this is maybe perhaps exceeded what we thought. Smoke climbs out, and the crowd acknowledging Tony Stewart in his final run at Richmond International Raceway. See Ryan Newman, he's had a good run and making the chase uh, two years in a row, but Odds are highly against him right now, making it three. Brian Scott involved in this. I had mentioned Chris Busher. I'm not sure the 34 was involved in this. I think it was Ryan Newman. I think the 34 was in it, but he drove away. Definitely didn't get the most damage, but you're going to see here the 31 and the 14. There's some contact right here heading into turn one. The 31 accelerates, gets inside the 14 as they enter the backstretch. Yeah, we've seen this several times. The cars haven't, you know, get into turn one. And I think the 14 just kept coming down on the 31 on the back straight. Oh, it wasn't happy maybe with what went on in turn one. And big impact by the 23. And you see right there, Chris Busher kind of bounces between them. Yeah. Luckily gets through. But that was a really big impact for the 23 of David Reagan. It was great to see him climb out window net down right away. This would be a great view of it, Jeff. Outside 13. 19 straight back, looking inside tight, inside tight, inside tight. We got Rick Hard right here, got Rick Hard. That's the hit that Kenseth was talking about. And while doing that, Kozlowski runs into the back of Tony Stewart, so then this. From Tony Stewart's bumper camera. And that's where all the front end damage came from. Yeah, I mean, I felt good in the car today, just uh, it's still a long day here. All right, you win again at the Brickyard. Tony, can you put this one in comparison to the last one? This one's for every one of those fans in the stands that pull for me every week and take all the bullshit from everybody else. Tony Stewart, your winner at the Brickyard. The last time he won here, he went on to win next week. to beat all day long. And when the checkered flag waved, it was Tony Stewart, the native Hoosier, and the entire Home Depot team who were climbing the fence. You went three wide, you didn't get pissed off at anybody in the racing, you just said the F word. Is this what fun is for you? Which F word did I say? You said fun. You said fun. You said oh. <laughs> I'm like, man, I almost made it through the whole day without getting fined. <laughs> did I even answer your question? <laughs> what was the question? I don't remember. Was this fun? Oh yeah, it was great. <laughs> Normally by the time you leave here, you're so mad at everybody and you just, all I do, I go back and I sit in the transporter and take a shower in there and sit for a half hour because I don't want to see him at the helicopter pad. You know, because I'm so mad at a dozen guys and I'm like, I can't whip them all at once. I can just take them one at a time, but I can't. I, I just a couple of them I might be able to take at the same time, but not a lot of them like that. So you can pick which ones they are. You're pretty, pretty savvy on that. But um, what was Boyer's deal? So, oh. Glad he got out of that then. <laughs> It'd be really hard to listen to him next year. <laughs> he's hard enough to hear on the radio as it is because he's 
ADD anyway. It's like, dude, just take a breath and slow down. And we'll, it takes five people, and it's like every breath somebody picks a different part of the sentence to try to understand. And it's like a game show. It's like, take clipboard for 600, please. So, I'll be all right if this is the last place I went on. I'm going for more, just for the record. Don't think that I'm just <laughs> I see pens going crazy. I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't say that. I didn't say I'm laying down. I'm just saying if that's the only one I get this year, then, then I'll be content. But um, uh, I don't think any, I think you've known me long enough. You guys know that I don't lay down for anything. So all you got to do is just give me that little bit of hope, and I'm, I'll, I'll run with it. This track is one of your favorites. What's it mean to say farewell? Well, I'll see it in the spring. I'll be back here. I just won't wear a helmet when I come back here. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's it was cool. This place is so much fun. I, I told myself the last 10 laps, you know, we we weren't racing anybody. There wasn't anybody around us. I said, just enjoy these last 10 and just savor the moment and think about it. So that's, that's what I did. I really thought about what I was doing those last 10 laps and just kind of soaked it all in.